This is the day of the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Greetings, Christ Church family. We give thanks for Harmony, one of the newest uh, baptized people in the life of Christ Church. We give thanks for her greeting you this day with, this is the day that the Lord has made. Makes me a little nervous uh, about job security. She did that so well. We're grateful for her and blessed for family and are glad that all of you are joining us for worship this day. We're in the season of Easter, and today's text take us to John's Gospel. We come to this passage about the Good Shepherd, and learning to listen for that voice that calls us, knows us, and invites us to follow that we might experience abundant life. A couple things I want to be sure to share with you this morning as we begin. I want you to know, people are asking the question, when will we gather again in person? And it's a really good question. I want you to be aware that a staff and leadership of the church are asking that same question on your safety is our first priority. We're running through scenarios, possibilities, plans, and do not have definitive answers yet. We'll certainly follow the guidance of health officials, government officials, and we'll come to you with a plan that's uh, well in advance of the opportunity for us to gather in person. In the meantime, we're so glad that you join us, folks both near and far, for this wonderful opportunity for worship. I want to express my gratitude for your generosity to Christ Church and its mission and ministry. April was a very strong month, and we give thanks for your sharing, uh, your shared sacrifice to be sure that the mission and ministry of the church continues. Also, I am blown away at your response to our COVID-19 fund. Today, you've given over $14,000 and counting. It's simply remarkable. We've set a goal, and you've gone flying past it. Of course, the need continues to mount as well, uh, opportunities to continue to feed hungry children, and so I thank you for your generosity and urge all of us to continue. This coming week, a couple of announcements I want to be sure to share with you. On Thursday, we will have a National Day of Prayer Observance. That will happen via Zoom, and so we will be sending you a link in next week's e-blast and invite you to pay attention for that. It'll be on Thursday at noon. And next Sunday, in the midst of our service of worship, we'll be acknowledging Mother's Day and celebrating those who have been mother figures in our lives. In advance of that, we'd love to be able to show a lot of faces and people from across the congregation. So we're inviting you to record yourself saying, Happy Mother's Day, or your family, and send that clip in. And or to also record a clip that says, I love my mother because, or I loved my mother because. Send that in, and we'll have a compilation of that that you'll get to see in worship on Mother's Day. And finally, a word of thanksgiving. So many of you helped me remember and celebrate my birthday this week. It was great to get calls and texts and see social media posts, all of it helping me to remember that uh, I'm in the prime of my life, and I give thanks for that. Uh, seriously, it was a lot of fun. A pandemic, a modified celebration at home with family. And also, you may or may not know this, but uh, our rescue dog, Weston, also celebrates his birthday on the same day as me. So we had a great uh, celebration at our house. He got new uh, toys, and uh, I got some uh, wonderful food and cake and dessert with the family. So thank you again, and uh, let us now continue with the worship of God. I invite you to stand as you are able, uh, and in body, mind, or spirit, for our call to worship. The Lord is our shepherd. We are the sheep of Christ's pasture. The shepherd makes us lie down in green pastures. In Christ we dwell secure. The shepherd leads us beside still waters and restores our souls. We worship Christ, our shepherd, our God. Our opening hymn, one that I hope is familiar, the tune, the words, offer us the opportunity to express thanksgiving and joy to God, crown him with many crowns. Let us sing together.
one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another using our prayer of confession. O God, our great shepherd, you tenderly gather us as lambs, carrying us with your all-embracing love. Yet like sheep, we wander from you, following our own ways, ignoring your voice, and distrusting your provisions. Forgive our stubborn rebellion, our hardened hearts, our lack of trust. Refresh us once again by your quiet waters of mercy, and restore our souls by your redeeming love. Guide our paths that we might follow you more closely. And now, Good Shepherd, hear our silent prayers of confession and petition. Lord, hear our prayers. And friends, hear this good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name, In the name of, of Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good morning. Pastor Ben here. Gosh, I missed y'all so much and really wish that you were gathered right here with me for this children's time. Later in this service, I'm going to tell a story about a man named Charlie and his elephant named Nita. Charlie met Nita when she was first born and trained her to be in his circus act. And they spent 40 years together traveling the world, performing for young and old alike. And then when they both got older, they retired. Charlie retired and Nita was sent to a zoo. But then after 15 years had passed, Charlie went back to visit Nita. And guess what? He got to the gate, called Nita's name, and out of all the elephants that were there, she recognized his voice and immediately turned and came to him. And out of all the elephants that were there, Charlie knew exactly which one was Nita. It's like the relationship that Jesus talks about when he tells a story about being a good shepherd. He knows you, and he knows me. He knows the number of hairs on our head. He knows everything about us. And he invites us to listen to his voice and to follow him. So I want you to think about ways that you can listen for his voice. And all the other voices and distractions and sounds, you can listen for Jesus' voice who loves you and cares for you, knows you, and you can follow him. I remember when I was a child, I realized that I had a birthmark on my hand. And for a little while, I was worried about that. I, I didn't really like that. It was so obvious and there. And I said something to my mom about it one time. You know what she said? She said, oh, Ben, that's a distinctive mark that you have, and I always know it's you. Among all the other children, I know exactly which child is mine, because you have that beautiful mark on your hand. And that helped me to see that differently for the rest of my life. I want you to know that Jesus knows you, everything about you, and loves you and wants to be in relationship with you. And even during these times when we're apart, he finds you at your home and cares about you, and you can pray to him and he will listen. I give thanks that God knows us that well in Christ and that we're invited to know and to follow that still, small voice. Take care, be good, and we'll see you soon. As we prepare to receive our offering this morning and to give our gifts, uh, we want to reiterate how thankful we are for your generosity um, and how your gifts make a difference here at Christ Church and they make a difference in our community, even though we cannot gather um, together in person. Um, seeing all of the children coming to our feeding sites, getting to go home with lunches, um, getting to take food home to their family over the weekend, um, it, really, it really does make a difference. Um, one note that we have um, is that on our website, you can actually create a recurring gift, which um, makes it so that way you don't have to go in and manually input that every week. You can just sort of set it and forget it in that way. Um, and there is instruction on how to do that in our weekly e blast. If you're not receiving that, please let us know and we can get you signed up for it. Um, but there's also a link under um, giving on our website uh, that you can, you can go there and find that information. So now let us bring our gifts to God with hearts of gratitude.
Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them. And the sheep follow because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and to kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Faithful, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. And let us pray. Gracious and good God, in these strange times, we give you thanks for the gift of your word, which is familiar, comforting, and guides us to abundant life. We pray now, O oh God, that you would open our ears, that you would make ready our hearts, that you would prepare our souls, that you would make them to be fertile ground, where your word might take root, and in time we pray bear fruit for the kingdom. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen.
Some voices you never forget. Years later, you can still recognize them. Charlie Frank raised Nita the elephant from birth. When she was old enough, Charlie began to train Nita. His hope was to be able to include her in his circus act. Over time, Nita mastered all of the cues and commands. He was confident that she was ready. The first time they performed together, it was magic. And for the next 40 years, Charlie and Nita traveled the globe, delighting circus crowds, young and old alike. But eventually, it came time for Charlie to retire, to give up the act. Before doing though so, he wanted to make sure that Nita would be well cared for going forward. And so he gifted her to the San Diego Wild Animal Park, where she was given a grand enclosure to explore and plenty of friends to play with. Fifteen years passed after his retirement, but then an invitation came to Charlie. He was invited to come and visit Nita at the zoo. Upon arrival, Charlie walked slowly but confidently to the gate. And then, in that old, familiar voice, he called Nita by name. Nita! Nita! Now, Nita was over a hundred yards away, the distance of a football field. But incredibly, as soon as she heard his voice, she stopped what she was doing, turned, and walked immediately to him. In the moments that followed, Charlie led Nita through their old routine. And amazingly, she nailed it. All the old tricks. She responded just like she used to. And every time she did, Charlie rewarded Nita with the jelly bean. It was just like old times. It was just like the two had never been apart, even though 15 years had passed. And then when it was time for Charlie to depart, Nita followed him to the edge of the fence and this grand gesture of saying goodbye. Talk about a bond. Talk about a deep connection between Nita and Charlie. Even after all of those years, Nita still recognized his voice. He still knew her. Charlie knew her even among all the other elephants. Walking to the gate, he was immediately able to spot Nita among all the other elephants in the enclosure. He knew exactly which one was her, and she knew his voice. Even when they were going through the routine, Charlie noticed a spot on Nita and called it to the attention of the zookeepers. It was obvious to all who witnessed this that the two share a special bond. But here's the question. How did that come to pass? Clearly, this was not an accident, the bond between Charlie and Nita. It didn't just form overnight or by chance. I mean, listen, I call my dog Weston at home by name all the time. He doesn't come running and respond like Nita did. So what was different between Charlie and Nita? Well, the answer lies in the fact that the two invested a great deal of time in their relationship. Charlie could recall how they practiced every single day, how they built trust through practice and reward. And he noted the more time and effort they spent together, the more he learned about her likes, dislikes, and markings, the more she came to trust him, to see that he would provide and care for her, the more familiar they became with one another. Charlie was clear, it took a great deal of intentionality. But it worked, and even years later, after all that time apart, she was able to recognize Charlie's familiar voice. Of course, this kind of bond between person and creature is nothing new. It dates back thousands of years. In our text for the morning, Jesus uses a similar illustration, a, a figure of speech, to describe the kind of leader that he intends to be and the kind of bond relationship that he wants with his followers. Now, for Jesus' illustration to make sense, you need some context. We need to understand the events leading up to this moment. You go back to chapter 9 of John's Gospel. Jesus has just healed a blind man. And in response, some in the gathered crowd are angry, while others are amazed. They're all trying to figure out exactly who is this Jesus? Is he from God or not? Is he a prophet or not? Is he the Messiah like he claims to be or not? Is he the Son of God? 
Now, to add some further context, it's really important for this to make sense. You need to know that Jesus is not the only one running around claiming to be the Messiah or the Son of God. There are many other voices claiming to be so also. Now, some of these other voices are revolutionary leaders. They're like warlords. And they are eager to lead Israel into confrontation with the powers that be. While some of the others running around claiming to be the Messiah are willing to submit to Rome because they believe to do so will help Israel keep all of its wealth and power. All of which leads the, the crowd, the masses, asking the question, well, will the real Messiah please stand up? Which voice should we listen to? Whose voice should we follow? To aid them in their efforts, Jesus, as he's so often prone to do, tells a parable of sorts. This time, a parable about shepherds and sheep. And then Jesus points out that these other voices, these others claiming to be the Messiah, are like the thieves and the bandits in the parable. They do not enter by the gate, but they come in by another way. And that their only intention is to steal, to kill, or to destroy. He explains, on the other hand, that he is the good shepherd. And what's a good shepherd like? What does a good shepherd do? Well, Jesus explains it. A good shepherd comes in by the gate. A good shepherd knows the sheep and can call them by name. A good shepherd goes ahead and leads them on the right paths. Did you know that even to this day, good shepherds still behave this way? To this day, in the Middle East, sheep of different flocks regularly co-mingle together. And to the naked eye, you and I, it would be impossible to tell the sheep apart. But a good shepherd can take a staff, go into the sheepfold, speak a word, or make a distinctive sound, or call the sheep by names he's given to them. And only his sheep will recognize the sound, recognize the voice, and follow. A stranger can go in, make the same sound, call out the same names, and the sheep will not follow. It's an incredible sight to behold. The sheep know the distinctive voice of their shepherd, and when they hear it, they follow. The good shepherd knows his sheep by distinctive markings and behaviors. He can call them by name. Again, just like with Charlie and Nita, this is no accident. This doesn't just happen by chance. This is a result of a great deal of time and intentionality and training. Shepherds and sheep spend most of their day together. And over time, the shepherd becomes very familiar with the sheep. Over time, they develop a very strong mutual bond. Shepherds learn the likes, dislikes, and the idiosyncrasies of their sheep. Barbara Brown Taylor, preacher and teacher in her work, The Shepherd's Flute, says it's kind of like the shepherds know like one might be like Houdini, who's always trying to escape. There's another like Pegleg, who limps from an old injury. And there's another like Bossy, who likes to butt heads. Well, the sheep learn that they can also trust the shepherd, trusting the shepherd to provide safe pasture, protection, and care. The sheep learn to recognize the shepherd's unique voice and to learn that that's the only voice that matters. So when the shepherd calls, he doesn't have to drive them or use a shepherd's hook to try to move them along or a sheepdog. They simply obediently follow. It's this kind of leading, protecting, providing that Jesus is making clear he is offering. It's this kind of relationship that Jesus is inviting the hearers into. It's this kind of bond that he desires to form with them. He wants his followers to know, to be assured, to trust that he is the good shepherd. That he will lead them to green pastures, by still waters, down the right paths and into abundant life. So that they need not fear any evil, but can trust that they will dwell with him secure forever. That's the point of the parable that Jesus is telling this day. And it is one incredible offer. Some 21 centuries later, this image of the good shepherd still rings true. This continues to be the kind of relationship that Christ seeks to have with you and with me. It's the kind of bond that Christ wants with us. He wants nothing more than to be your good shepherd. To that end, he keeps calling to us 
and inviting us to hear and respond. How? How do we respond? It's through scripture. It's through worship. Through that still, small voice in a vast myriad of ways, not always audible, but always distinguishing that Christ is calling. He calls us by name, just like a good shepherd knows his sheep, just like a good shepherd can distinguish them and tell them apart. Christ knows us, knows all of us, the good and the bad, the likes and the dislikes, and incredibly, even when we fall short, even when we mess up, still wants to be in relationship with us. And will leave the 99 behind to come and find you, to find me. And promises, as we just celebrated in the season of Easter, will lay down his life for us. Amazingly, offering us abundant life to lead us to still waters and green pastures. And yet here's perhaps the problem. I'm afraid too often we don't always and everywhere respond to this offer, to this beautiful invitation. Why? Well, sometimes we can't make out the voice. We haven't always and everywhere done the word, put in the time, made the effort. We haven't familiarized ourselves with the sound of the Good Shepherd's voice. We haven't developed the capacity to hear the call. Not only that, but it's also true in our day, just like it was when Jesus is telling this parable the first time. There are a lot of other competing voices out there with offers that often sound appealing, nice, shiny, and pretty. And yet, in reality, if followed all the way to their ends, lead to doubt, destruction, and death, leaving us unfulfilled. But they don't sound like that initially, and those competing voices often get our attention. And so the work, the, the invitation of today's lesson is to invite us to learn to distinguish the voice of the Good Shepherd to develop the capacity to make out the voice of Christ amid all the other clamor and noise in our world. You ask the question, well, how can I do that? Where do I start? Well, I think Charlie and Nita, the elephants, offer a great example. We learn from that illustration that it takes time, intentionality, effort, and training. It's not always instinctual. It doesn't happen overnight or by chance. But the good news is that this kind of relationship can be developed. The saints who have gone before us, they've proven it. They prove it can be done. One of the other texts assigned for this morning from Acts chapter 2 shows the early church gathered in homes, breaking bread together, praying together, listening to the apostles' teachings, dwelling richly with one another. They're going through those, those motions we talked about last week, through the practices of the faith, prayer, Feasting together, generosity, it's those everyday kinds of practices. And through a disciplined life, they found that they can make out the voice. I can testify to the power of these practices myself over time. I know something of the difference when I experience morning prayer, midday prayer, evening prayer, and when I go through a season of life where I don't. It can be hard to make out that still voice. But when I tune in, create space, create space in silence, I can begin to train the ear again to hear. The saints who've gone before us, they didn't leave all these disciplines as just sort of rigid things you felt like you had to do. They model for us that it's the practice of doing prayer, worship, paying attention, listening, are ways that we familiarize ourselves and learn to hear that voice that is calling us to abundant life. And I promise if you'll live into the practices, into the disciplines, if you'll take time every day to dig into God's Word, take time to pray, take time to gather for worship, you too will learn to distinguish that familiar voice when it calls. That's my prayer. That you'll be able to say beyond a shadow of doubt, the Lord is my shepherd, and therefore I shall not want and to get to experience the kind of abundant life that Christ promises for us in this life and in the life to come. An offer that only He can offer. And she will follow Him. Follow Him where He leads. Which maybe for now means that we're at home. And it means that we practice the disciplines. That we've got this gift of time. And some have asked, well, what do I do? Prayer. Worship. 
the spiritual disciplines, that now, what a better time than any to, to train, to be able to hear that familiar voice. And then when the time comes to follow that voice out into the world, when restrictions are released and we can go forth again, to follow that voice to meet the needs of the world. That old familiar voice calling your name. The good shepherd who knows you by name and who promises you need not fear evil, but will lead you to green pastures. By still waters is the gift of the one we're called to follow. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Now let us join together in prayer for the church and for the world. For each petition where I say, Lord, in your mercy, please respond with hear our prayer. O God, with faces touched by the light of the new day, and hearts warmed by our prayers and our praises, we come before you to pray for the needs of our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into the light of this morning, we raise those who are struggling with illness, with despair over their lives, or with the breakdown of relationships. May the light of Christ shine upon them. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Into the light of this morning, we bring those places in our world where war, violence, poverty, and need are the experiences of everyday life. May the light of Christ shine upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into the light of this morning, we bring the headline news of this weekend. We hold in our hearts the pain of those suffering violence, bereavement, or conflict. May the light of Christ shine upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And into the light of this morning we bring ourselves, the private struggles, the heart's yearnings, the hidden dreams, and the unfulfilled potential. May the light of Christ shine upon us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now we join together with confidence of the children of God and pray together the prayer that Jesus is always teaching us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
our text, Jesus says, He calls them his own sheep by name and weeds them out. The gatekeeper opens the gate and the sheep hear his voice and the sheep follow because they know his voice. What a gift it is to follow the good shepherd, to follow that voice that leads us into life and life abundant. I invite you into the practice, the continual work of learning to distinguish his voice from among all the others, that indeed you might know life and life abundant. Stay safe. As you go forth, don't go far yet. And know that we miss you tremendously and look for the day when we all gather together again in the praise of God. Go in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.